Hey, it's MK and welcome back to day two of Christie's Beautiful Life 30 Day Sketch. Um, I'm not sure if it's a challenge or not, or if it's just 30 days of sketches. I don't know. Um, but I do know that I, this is like, when I joined last year, this was my favorite. I loved this. I loved the rush and all that. I am a little bit behind because um, I went on an uber long retreat. It was perfect. It is what the body needed. And now I'm playing catch up. So <laughs> if I seem a little out of whack, that is what is going on. Um, I am doing a companion page to the page that I did yesterday and this is actually the fish that my daughter caught and so we are going to um, I'm going to catalog this fish or document it because it is I mean this sucker was mean look at him look at those teeth and he had them everywhere like all of his all of his fins were had uh, like nails all over him. He was a nasty, mean little guy, but uber yummy in um, the oven. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, so what do I have? I have the last little bit of my um, Seaside collection. I do have this one, whoa, I do have this one piece of paper um, but I'm not using this one today, so this will be the last of my seaside, you guys. I absolutely, positively loved this paper. Um, I loved the first section, which took me forever to use, and now I'm loving the second one because I love how light um, this turned out, but you guys probably don't know that. Um, I went to my Cricut, and I cut out a fishing pole. Um, I thought that it would be kind of cool considering the sketch that I have not showed you guys yet. So here it is. This is by Jen Scow, I think is how you say her name, um, for the Hip Kit Club, right there. And I loved how all of these stringamy thingies come down, and so it reminded me of the fishing. And since we're, you know, unhooking a fish, I thought it would be perfect for this. I'm not really sure how I'm going to get it to all tie in. It's still up in my brain, and it hasn't come out yet. I have this little scrap of paper right here this awesome uh, sandpaper looking thing that is actually from a paper stack. I don't remember which one. Um, I got several of them at the same time, but I know how. I know that it is because it's single-sided. <laughs> I have um, two sticker sheets. This one's almost used up, and then this one is slightly used up, so I have those. I always seem to have the sticker sheets more than the paper left over. Why, why is that? That's weird. Anyways, I have those, and then this is my base piece, which is my last full piece from the um, Seaside Collection. It still has its zip strip on top, so I plan on using that as well. I brought in some fibers, so this is my favoritist um, ribbon in the whole wide world, and I'll show you guys why. And then, of course, I decided to use a thicker twine instead of that um, my favoritist twine in the whole wide world. I went with thicker just because I wanted it to be pretty prominent on the page that my photos were hanging, okay? And then today is also, ha, it's also, that was terrible, you guys, um, take out your tools Tuesday. What tools are we going to play with today? Well, this month I was going to focus on dies. Now, they don't have to be just these thin dies. This is just what I happen to have in the category that I want to cover today. So today, that's annoying, I'm sorry. So today I wanted to cover, I broke up my dies in sections because it seems like, um, you know, whenever I want to watch a film about a die, it's a die on top of a die on top of a die, and I just want the one die, okay? And um, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I, I love watching intermixing stuff, you guys. You should know me. I love, I love making all my stuff work. But today I wanted to focus on background dies. Now... These are all the background dies that I own, and they all happen to be thin cut dies. Um, if I do find one that's in the big, they call them bigs, I don't know, the chunky die, um, then I will definitely call myself a liar and show it to you guys. But as far as I know, this was all that was in my category of background dies. And I do want to tell you guys that I repurpose these plastic envelopes. So, um, if a Stampin' Up! die comes with a stamp, then I put the stamp and the die together 
in an Avery L envelope. So that way all my stamps are in identical envelopes, okay? But then I save these plasticky envelopes for just the dies because I feel like they're a little bit more thicker. Well, they are thicker. They are 10 times thicker, but they can withstand the, the rough edge of the die, okay? So I repurpose them for just my dies only because in my Avery L pocket, um, I actually have like a backer sheet and then the stamp set and then the dies are stored safely in between so it's not scuffing up my Avery L pockets. Okay, long story short, these are not Stampin' Up! dies. <laughs> this one is actually by the Paper Rose or Paper... I think it's Paper Rose. Anyways, I'm not sure. That's what this one is by. Um, this one is, I believe, Font... Nope, this one is a Stampin' Up! die. So is that one. Huh! This one is a fawn, fawn lawn, lawn fawn, lawn fawn. I don't even know my own product, you guys, but it's in a close to my heart one. Same thing. I take my close to my heart stamps out, and I, I have been saving the ones without the little buttons on them. I threw all those button ones. Actually, I gave them away because somebody thought that they could use them for sorting fabric, which I thought was an ingenious. Um, so I repurpose my, my envelopes for my close to my heart ones as well because they're great packaging they're nice and thin but when you add the stamps and the little cushion that it comes with and everything else it became really uber thick and the Avery L ones just were so super simple so why am I showing you guys all of these well because I'm just showing you guys all the different types now these ones are mostly for card making but what I do is I enjoy um, incorporating these in my scrapbooking I don't I don't just bypass them because oh that's a five and a quarter by four and a quarter. I, I'm, it's for cards. I'm not going to do it. Well, all of these, all of these are for card making. And for me, it's, I will buy these because this would make an awesome background on a, um, on a, on a layout. So would this one. So would this one. And so would this one. So they all just, I mean, yes, this one does cut out a square. But it's like a six by six paper. Just butt them up together. Okay? And I just, I just, that's what I do. And then I love these off the wall little ones. Now, this one will cut out an entire um, set, but it also has all these little bits that cut out inside it as well. So it's a wonky square, is kind of what it is. This one's a broken maze. This one um, is from Spellbinders. This one is from Elizabeth Craft Design. These four, there are four in there. Um, these ones are all from the paper rose or something like that. I've got a circuit board and then all of these really cool, like, they remind me of planner designs, but kind of like somebody gave a, a Rubik's Cube and messed them all up. <laughs> so that's what those are. I just love intric I just love weird designs like that, you guys. These ones are kind of wonky circles. Or they could be red as roses, depending on what color you put you punch them out as. Um, this one is from the Elizabeth Crafts, and then I have a blank one. <gasps> Why? Oh my gosh! Because that's what we're going to be using today. So I wanted to go through and uh, show you guys. I have all of these Tim Holtz ones right yonder, and these ones seem to be um, in a lot of questions. Like, how do you use these? How would you incorporate these? Well. These ones here, this his first set, I should say, which I think were, I don't think it was this one. Anyways, I can't remember which one his first set was, but I think one came with four and the other one came with three. Um, and I want to say it was these guys here. And then the larger ones came as set number two. Anyways, doesn't matter. But these ones, these, these four, are the perfect pocket page card size. So you could cut this out on a 3x4 and have this really cool intricate cut out because it, it doesn't, it's not a solid cut. It will cut out each individual little thing and leave you the card. Okay, same with all of these. None of these will actually cut out this design right here. It just cuts out the image. Okay, so all these little hexes will get cut out and then leave you with a holy piece of paper. Okay, that is how all of these work. And what I like to do with these is take a piece of paper like so, which is exactly what I'm going to do, 
and run it through my die cut machine. Now my die cut machine has a 9 by 12 platform so I could put this piece of paper in and place the die on it wherever I want and keep running it through. All right, And that is exactly what I plan on doing. I haven't made up my marbles of what I was going to do yet but I wanted to put this like all the way in the corner like so and run it through and then keep stacking it like maybe go like this and then see how far over I can get all of these designs okay and run this whole paper through using only one die which I haven't decided if I want the um, the cobblestone or the bubbles I think that the bubbles don't make really sense with the bricks but that's what I wanted to do so the reason why I wanted to do this is because the background to me is kinda sort of a little bit plain Jane and I'm not really sure with the size of my photos that I have if I'm going to be able to even see anything okay but I have this scrap I want to play I want to use my dies and I want to show um, you guys how this is used now I can't bring my die cut machine over here it's got its permanent little home over there um, I actually my real die cut machine kind of um, broke on me we had to take it apart just to get the platforms out and get my um, get one of my embossing folders out and so with that being said <laughs> I am using I'm borrowing a die cut machine um, just so I could do my Tuesdays because I was like oh perfect timing it decides to um, take a vacation and this is what's coming up all month long is my die cuts not all month but every Tuesday um, we're gonna play with die cuts but anyways I wanted to do this we are also going to trim down my four by six photos not a whole lot um, but just enough to where they will fit and suit me for the sketch and then also this is going to be in the background of them so again we're gonna just play we're gonna see what's going on and um, hopefully you guys will understand how these little um, I think they're called textures or mixed media dies I'm not really sure but it's uber super cool how these work I absolutely love them and they are perfect size for his tags um, Tim Holtz's tags the pocket cards um, all that stuff but we're going to use it on a full sheet for scrapbooking that's what we're gonna do all right let's go see what kind of mess I can make off camera I went to my die cut machine and die cut all of my hexagons I decided the hexagons because I kind of wanted it to look like a net and now what I'm doing is I am going to rip along all of the straight edges and then that way it kind of looks like um, a cut up net I guess is that does that make sense I hope it does so um, just ripping off the teeny tiny little pieces now the larger pieces um, where the die cut doesn't really nestle into itself is kind of sort of obnoxious, especially when it has an exact perfect pattern. Uh, but it's okay. Uh, the photos cover it up mostly. And then also I um, do end up making a decision a little later too. So I decided that I was going to rip up my pieces or I'm sorry no I'm going to ink up the pieces where I just ripped off because I had a lot of white space showing and I didn't really like the white space so cleaning up my desk a little bit so that way I can make room for my layout and not have all that ink on my desk yeah so now I'm just going to go through and decide where I want my photos because again all of the um, perfect straight lines are kind of sort of um, annoying and so I don't want that really, really well. And again, I'm only having three pictures instead of five. And I want this fishing pole to go across my layout. Um, and so I decided right off the bat that I was not needing the actual like line and hook. I decided I wasn't going to do that. So went to my stash and pulled out these really uber old circle um, adhesive dots is basically what they are. And I'm going to wrap the twine to make it look like it is a uh, spool of um, fishing line. I know I take things way too literal around here. <laughs> but first I, I, I make the decision, you know what, I'm going to glue it. This is going to make it so much easier if I just glue everything down. 
instead of have everything shifting while I'm trying to glue this twine down because once it's glued down with this liquid adhesive it's it's done so I even decided to glue um, the rod down because normally I I position everything to where it's kind of sort of oh the way I want it before I make the final decision of gluing so uh, for some reason, this first little bit takes a while for it to dry. I don't understand why, but that's okay. And I'm just going to tuck my line underneath each photo. And I'm going to go down. Uh, I did get interrupted. I apologize. <laughs> it's uber early in the morning. And, um, you know, my boys are very needy. <laughs> so I am just going to follow the fishing line all the way down. And then everywhere that there is a picture, I'm going to drop the line down as if they were all hung up from the fishing line. So yeah, I, I don't know if that makes any sense. You can't really have three fish on one rod, but hey, it works for me. I think it is a cool effect and something that, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested in uh, seeing how it looks and just uh, kind of like, you know, catching the fish in the net type thing is, is what I was really going for. <laughs> in all honesty. Um, just trying to, you know, show off my hair. <laughs> I put a little bit of extra adhesive in the center of my little spiral just to make sure that it is really uber stuck. So again, those solid spots where the dies do not meet up exactly, I'm just choosing to rip them out. And now my net kind of definitely looks a little bit more um, on the on the, you know, I don't know, fishy side. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. And adding extra adhesive to the back of my photos because I only put adhesive on um, the photo and then it stuck to the net. So clearly it's going to need a little bit more help to um, be attached to the actual page. I don't mind the larger, blo um, you know, voids, I guess is what they are, in the net um, up at the top. But yeah, I... I didn't really like them down at the bottom. I do like it now where it's kind of like a torn net. Um, I enjoy using my my background dies for everything. Now this, this particular one, because of how small it was, did end up taking about 16 passes because I did four on each row and I did four rows, four times four, that's 16. Yay, I can do math today. Anyways, oh, here is my favoritest, favoritest, uh, fiber in the whole wide world. It's, I don't know if it's called a ribbon or not, but it starts out uber super skinny. And when you start to rip it apart, it kind of looks like a net. And I just absolutely love it. I love it for, you know, outdoor photos I, or layouts. I love it for, um, you know, like in the home layouts because it's very homey. I love it for uh, country. So like a, you know, hayride, things like I just use it for everything. And um, so now I'm trying to see if I can put it behind my zip strip before actually putting it down because I wasn't sure where I wanted um, this strip. Now I'm showing you guys, I can't lay it down straight at all, but I was just, um, I couldn't decide how much of that, um, that seaweed pattern I wanted to be, I wanted shown. And so I was trying to be smart and put my uh, ribbon on the zip strip. Well, I didn't put enough adhesive where it needed to be. Uh, yeah, so I fiddle with it. I'm good to go. It's just crazy. But I just love the effects of this ribbon. You can use it skinny and it just looks like a really cool rope. Or you can spread it apart and it just looks like a really cool net. Um, or even one of those like burlap ribbons that people um, or that I've seen tied around vases and and things like that. So I decided that um, I'm going to use perfect as the large part of my title. I don't really need a huge title, but um, you know, this was the highlight of our fishing trip is pulling out this bad boy um, from inside the rocks. And oh my goodness, I just, it, this made my day. I couldn't wait to find another one, which we did not. But yeah, it was, oh my GERD. <laughs> This guy was insane checking him out and pulling him out. And oh my gosh, I just, it was great. And it was Cora's and she was so super stoked. So anywho, uh, I went off to go and get some other alphas because I want my title to say um, uh, the perfect catch. 
So I wasn't going to go as cliche as that, but I just realized that I had no more T's. So I am going to cut um, this pound sign hashtag, I don't know what it's called, um, in half. And I just have a little lowercase T, which is fine because I didn't have any more E's either. And so I just cut a three um, kind of sort of off because the bottom part is a little longer than the top. So I wanted it to match. And then um, I'm using the other side of the hash as my other T, which is kind of sort of skinnier because um, I didn't like how down at the bottom you could still kind of sort of see that it was a hashtag. So I made it just a hair skinny, but it's okay. It, I like um, how wonky it is. But um, yeah, so I'm adding just a teeny tiny little bit of embellishments. I found um, two stars that were the right color. I did have those stars in that peachy pink, but I realized that there is no peachy pink at all on this layout. So I don't want to go and add another color. So then I found two more little round stars and I looked, took one more look at the sticker sheet and decided, you know what, I'm good. I really like this. Um, it is kind of on the simple side, but I still like the effect of it. I really love the background. I love using my background dyes. Um, and then, oh, there's my favorite ribbon. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Be sure to check out everyone else that is below playing along with um, Christy's 30 Days of Sketches. Make sure you are part of the Facebook group, which is also in um, down below in the comments or the extra section. I'm not sure what it's called. But yes, uh, check out everyone else that is playing, everyone else that is having a blast, and um, follow along. I'd love to see how your take on these sketches. All right, see ya.